Welcome back guys to another Sigs video. We're sorry it's been about four months. It's been a very hard quarter, but that's why we're making this video. How to succeed in STEM courses at Northwestern University. So first we're gonna go through some general advice, what to do, what not to do. And then we're gonna go through some specific classes we've taken in our first year and first quarter sophomore year at Northwestern. Starting with what to do, just in general, for all of your STEM classes, you're going to get some practice problems and you're going to have a lot of stuff on your plate. So if you can do nothing else, prioritize those practice problems. Those are going to be the most helpful. Simulate your test taking experience. Okay, so next up is PGSGs, um, which a lot of STEM classes have. Those are peer guided study groups, by the way. I think that they are hit or miss and it depends on the course. Like we all tried a bio one and we didn't find it that helpful, but we all tried a chemistry one and liked it. So I would say sign up for one, go to a few weeks, and then you can always drop it. So when it comes to taking a STEM test, you are gonna have to learn how to be strategic. Um, for example, most of them are gonna be like broken up into multiple choice and free response. And free response is where you can score a lot of partial credit, whereas like multiple choice, it's either you get it or you don't. So like maybe start with the free response and then you can get half credit rather than ending with it and getting no points because you didn't get to it iPads. iPads are so helpful for STEM classes. You can go without them, but as someone who went without an iPad last year and then got one with it, like got one this year, it has made the world a difference. I used to walk into class with my printed out slides and they would have their little iPads and they were just writing on their slides. I got one this year and now I can just take notes on the slides rather than having to write down everything they're saying. So, so helpful. And not sponsored, Sia has a $20 Apple pen. Um, Doop. <laughs> and Apple dupe because she lost hers um, and she raves about it. So if you don't want to spend $100 on an Apple Pencil, yeah. And lastly, we all use GoodNotes as our preferred note-taking app, um, which we highly recommend. Okay, so Grace talked a little about practice problems, but just know the quality of practice materials you're given. You're going to have a lot and like text practice problems from the textbook may not be as helpful as the one your instructor gives you. So I would rank the priority because you're going to be stressed for time for a lot of your exams. So that's important. Um, look at the C-Text. I know it's easy to be like, I have to take this course so I don't need to look at the C-Text. C-Texts are our version of Rate My Professor. So um, there are a lot of advice, like previous students would be like, read the textbook, it's helpful. Or don't read the textbook, it's helpful. So look at that before you take the course, like on break or whatever. Go to class. <laughs> it seems simple, but in college it's very, very easy, especially when the weather's nice, to just not go to class. Or when the weather's not nice. It's always easy not to go to class. <laughs> well, go to class. Um, also, go to office hours. It's very helpful, especially in STEM courses, because a lot of classes are very impersonal, and it's a time you can get to know the professor, especially because a lot of you who are pre-help or for internships, you're going to need a letter of rec. And then what not to do in STEM classes, don't waste practice materials early on because especially for like chemistry, you'll get one practice exam. And so you really want to be able to use that when you actually know what you're doing and it's actually helpful. And make sure to do a little bit of studying every day. Every YouTube study video is going to say that and it actually does help because it's just cramming like it might get you through the test, but everything builds on each other. So you're just going to struggle more later on. And I did this during Gen Chem and so I flopped heavily, but um, <laughs> don't convince yourself that you know the answer when you're doing a problem. Like when, after you do a problem and just looking at the answer, can be like, oh, I'll get that right on the test. Or like, oh, I know it without actually like actively thinking about it. Like that does not work. Um, don't be super overconfident. You'll, won't, you won't do well. All right, so now getting into the specific courses, I'm gonna talk about Gen Chem. First of all, I would just say, be a, be realistic with your expectations. Like I sacrificed a lot <laughs> of social or like extracurricular things to prioritize, like really studying and really trying to do well in this class. And I did, but that is not necessarily like the right thing to do. If you want to spend more time on other things, that's perfectly valid, but just know like you might not do as well as you want to. I would say you don't have to read the textbook. There's more, like stuff you should prioritize over that. And if you're confused, you can go back and read the textbook. But honestly, I find like YouTube videos more helpful. Also for Gen Chem, he or your professor will probably suggest textbook problems. And I know a lot of people just kind of like skip over them or try one or two. I would do the textbook problems because there have been multiple times when like exact textbook problems just with different numbers have been on the exams. Um, and I did all the textbook problems and like redid them if I didn't understand them. And I think that really helped. Kind of going off of that, make sure you actually understand the concepts rather than just memorizing how to do the problems because 
they're gonna look different on exams and no matter how many times you practice like you're gonna be stressed you're not gonna remember that type of problem but if you know the concept chemistry wise you can apply it which <laughs> i'm saying like <laughs> sound like a nerd <laughs> <laughs> know your chemistry but like <laughs> know your chemistry you know i found that very helpful if you don't understand something try and like figure it out ask a friend or go to office hours or google it like try and understand the concept and then for gen chem lab your grade really depends on your ta which sucks but um just get to know your ta and like communicate with them know their expectations some are more nitpicky than others just mm -hmm. keep an eye out and then just for the lab in general you really get thrown in the deep end so if you have no knowledge of anything whatsoever if you don't know what a flask is like do a little bit of research over um summer they're just just know that you're it's gonna be chaotic because they're just gonna be like go and then you have to like figure they everything really out throw you in <laughs> yeah um and then every week you have a notebook due um prep that notebook as much as you can before lab because you have to turn that in at the end of class so like you're gonna be rushing if you didn't prep as much as you can it just makes lab go so much smoother and you might be be able to get out early which is really nice next we're going to talk about organic chemistry it's a very scary class and for good reason but um something that helped is like practice problems i know practice problems are always good to do but specifically for organic chemistry because there are a lot of like synthesis problems where you're just thrown in and you need to know every reagent what leads to what so practice problems are very helpful and again rank which ones are more helpful than others use the textbook as a supplementary source that's what worked for me is um when i didn't understand something i'd go back to the textbook rather than reading all of the textbook before i went to class but that's also a preference thing that if it's like some people find it nice to have known the information before they learn it i say for orgo i read the textbook i took notes on it after lecture um because it goes a little more in depth and it makes more connections than lecture does and that really helped me so i think it really comes out of preference so give it a try and then kind of see how your study habits go <coughs> piazza i don't know if they'll still have it when you take the class but it's basically an online forum where you can ask questions, but it's so, so helpful. I looked at every single Piazza question before I went to the exam, and it took a long time, but it's very, very helpful because students are going to have questions that maybe you didn't think of, or maybe you also had that question, and you get an instructor response. And one time, like, one of the professors literally posted a similar question that was on the exam. So use Piazza, um, especially if you don't want to go into office hours, you can just put a question on there and it gets answered. That is your new social media. <laughs> Look, what though? Some people are posting Piazza questions at like midnight on a Saturday. Yeah, we don't do that. But, like, <laughs> also, don't like also ask ask a friend before you post on Piazza because there's some questions on there. Sometimes like, I do judge mm. Piazza. Yeah, like you a simple Google search or like sometimes the last question that has already been answered. Like, look, once Piazza <laughs> etiquette needs to be more. <laughs> so true. <laughs> okay, there's a book called Organic Chemistry as a Second Language. Please get this book. It's so so helpful. What I did was um, the summer before fall quarter, I read the whole book. Sounds really nerdy, I'm sorry, but it was really awful. We're really just unveiling our nerdiness. <laughs> yeah. it, it basically just dumbs down organic chemistry to like a very baseline. And it's, especially when you haven't learned anything like that before, it's very helpful. Some guy from John Hopkins wrote it. And there's one for each semester. So definitely get that and do the practice problems that are in it as well. And there's free PDFs of that floating around so you don't have to buy it if you don't want to. I also like, it's $40, but I got mine on off eBay for eight. Orgo Lab. Everything you've heard is true. It's really, really horrible. Um, it's just set up in a way where you're really thrown in the deep end. Like, you're expected to know. I remember one C Tech was like, why do I have to know all of Organic Chemistry 1 on the first day of Organic <laughs> Chemistry Lab? But find a group of people that you trust um, their chemistry knowledge of because you're going to have to do group things. And if they're at, how do I say it, like a very different level than you, it's not helpful to you and may be detrimental to you. He's gonna give like 10 supplemental videos for you to watch for a review of Gen Chem. You don't need to watch those. You do need to watch the IR and MR videos that he posts, but those are a waste of time. We literally like locked ourselves in a room, Grace didn't see us because we were watching those. Like, is this gonna be how the quarter goes? <laughs> it was, but, <laughs> but those aren't helpful and there are other resources like go to Khan Academy if you need a Gen Chem review. Also, it's very helpful to get a later lab day than an earlier lab day because oftentimes people post stuff on Sunday. So for people who had Monday lab, they had to prepare their stuff in like half a day. So it sucks, but Friday lab is the lab to get. <laughs> True. For the bio sequences, go to class. This is where iPads become really helpful because you can just download the slides. There's like figures and stuff. So when you're just like writing on a notebook or on paper, it's kind of hard if there's like pictures. 
I would say for studying, I rewatched the Panaptos and then re-annotated the slides and then I personally took made like a summary sheet. Definitely use the slides like as your main core studying because like personally I didn't find the textbook that helpful because it was just like a lot of extra information yeah. that you didn't need. Um, the tests are very much like it just everything you need is on the slides, so you don't need to do anything else. I think what I learned was like I'd look at a slide really quickly and just recall all the information that was on there because if you're just reading through the slides, you're not actively recalling, yeah. which is important. Yeah. So yeah, the PGSGs are kind of unhelpful, but the give you um, PGSG problems. So if you have a friend who's in PGSG, get those problems. Um, but they're low-key incorrect. <laughs> they're so, rational. Like, at least one of every problem set is going to just be wrong. Yeah, so, so um, just, like, be cognizant of that, and then use it towards the end of your setting, because then you can, like, use the most extra practice problems, but then you'll also be able to catch the ones that are incorrect. Also, the second one in the sequence is the easiest, is what we've been told. Yes. Now on to bio labs. There are three labs, um, and they're all basically the same setup. Like, they don't really go with the lab or the bio lecture class that they're going with. So the setup is going to be 20 minute quizzes at the beginning of each class. Um, I'm going to be honest, like they're very nitpicky quizzes. You get lecture videos beforehand, just know everything like on the lecture slides and what he says because the undergrad TAs make them and they love to just pick out random things just to get you. It's because it's sick, like, like their undergrad TAs were mean, so then they're mean. They're mean to the next <laughs> one, like the cycle, next year. No. So when we'll you are to you. <laughs> For me, this was maybe overkill for some people, but I did pretty well on the quizzes. I would watch them early on in the week and then like review them, review the content a little bit each day rather than like watching them the night before because there's just so much content. You're gonna pick your groups, find a smart group because you do a lot of lab work and- you All do the like, lab work is group work. Yeah, it's all group work. You do research projects together, so get a competent group. I would ask a lot of questions to Mordak or Brace, whoever is kind of like leading your lab because Sometimes they have very specific requirements and sometimes they don't make it very clear. Um, so I would like badger them and Mordak specifically kind of like tells you what he wants if you ask him questions, if you prime enough, so. Especially, we made the mistake of we would ask our TA because he sat right by us, but right. don't. Like, like a grad he, TA who hadn't taken the class. Yeah, so, but we're like, he's a graduate student, he knows what he's Honestly, doing. It's not his fault, but Mordak just wanted something different. Honestly, right. the undergrad TAs are also very helpful because yeah, they yeah. probably took the class last year and know exactly mm -hmm. what they need. Um, and then for the math classes, or for the calc classes, um, I'd say if you can get Shri or Sizemore, I had both of them and they were literally the best ever and actually made math interesting. Um, and heavily on Sizemore for calc too because she's the coordinator, which means she like, she makes the entire test and like the whole course, so it's like so easy if you like just take her class. Um, get early to office hours because there's so many people in Cal classes, so if you don't get early, you probably won't be able to ask a question. Go to discussion, even though it's, like, you don't have to go, um, because the TAs do help set up the homeworks that are due each week, and the homeworks are actually a decent part of your grade, so, like, and if you, like, check that with your friends and stuff and you get a good grade on that, it really helps pad your exams. And then if you have practice exams, do all of them. Sizemore gave, like, genuinely, like, 30 practice exams, and I did every single one. And like, it is so similar to those exams. And it just like genuinely, like I did so well in those classes just cause I just kept on doing practice exams. Okay, so lastly, um, this is a STEM video, but we're gonna talk about the humanities a little bit because we did take a few of those. Um, first of all, they're gonna sign a lot of readings. First year I did like every reading. Um, <laughs> you don't have to do that. Um, do like a few so that you know it also depends on the class but like pick a few so that you know what you're talking about or you can write an essay on the one or two you read that's all okay the test like you're gonna think that because a lot of times you'll be in stem courses you're gonna be like this is my easy course but the humanities courses are not very easy like the tests are very nitpicky at least for the all the psych courses i've taken um i would ask friends who have taken the course also see text but ask them how they studied for that specific course Everything we said about iPads, flip it. Because for this, you need your, to write on your computer. They're going to be talking at a speed that you're not going to be able to annotate on your slide. So always um, type your notes. Oh, Those they are, are awesome. Like a lot of the STEM courses feel very impersonal. So even if you don't have to take a humanities course, just take a fun psych class. It sounds so nerdy again. But if you just go to office hours and like talk to your just professor, they're so them. cool. Like, yeah. Also, that's another thing is go after class and ask your professors about um, what they would do in an assignment. That's what I did instead of my TA. But, but for humanities classes especially, it varies a lot depending from professor to professor and class to class. Like, 
even if it says the same title, like the same class, like it'll yeah. be a completely mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. class depending on what professor you have and what section you're in. So just look at CTEX for that. That is all. We hope this was helpful. If you have any more questions, let us know. We're also three people with three personal preferences, so these could not work for you. But yeah, we hope yeah. So. you do well in all your courses. Let us know what other videos you want us to post. Girl <laughs> Bees will be back soon. We might not get a video for another four months. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, what's recording? Ah. Ah. <laughs>